بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الحبه في الله a question was asked about a particular issue and the person asked is my iman is my faith non-existent and first and foremost that asking a question like that usually a person who asks something like this of course that they have iman when you say that your iman is non-existent or question whether your iman is existent or not this is a question of whether a person is a believer or or disbeliever so the fact that they are inquiring and that they want to know about maybe an issue or an error that they fell into of course that they have iman bi idnillah ta'ala but when you say someone's iman is non-existent that means they have nothing from iman that means they no longer believe in islam and that ahabatifillah <clears throat> i don't think any of us uh any of us bi idnillah ta'ala are afflicted with walhamdulillah but i wanted to read uh, a few statements a beautiful statements regarding iman just to make sure that we are we have proper comprehension of iman in islam and this is a beautiful statement of one of our salaf one of the tabi'in sufyan al-thawri rahimahullah ta'ala he said and this is uh, very relevant to what we see in this day and age uh, with regards to people's misunderstanding about iman and that some people believe that iman is either totally full and kamil or that iman is non-existent and this is incorrect and we're going to show you the madhab of ahl sunnah from imam sufyan al-thawri rahimahullah ta'ala he said khalafan al-murjiya fi thalatha نحن نقول إيمان قول والعمل وهم يقولون قول بلا عمل ونحن نقول يزيد وينقص وهم يقولون لا يزيد ولا ينقص ونحن نقول نحن مؤمنون بالإقرار وهم يقولون نحن مؤمنون عند الله إمام سفيان الثوري رحمه الله تعالى said the murjia they differed with us in three different ways and he's referring to us as ahl sunnati wal jamaa meaning those on the sabil of sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in in understanding creed and understanding uh, islam he said we say that iman is qawl wal amal that it is statements and it is actions and already implicit in that without him even saying is those actions also refer to actions of the heart no one says that you don't have to believe so meaning that iman is comprised as many of the scholars say uh, which can simplify the statement or clarify for us for those people who needed the actual statement of the heart regarding that iman or faith is comprised of three components that is comprised of your belief in the heart it's comprised of your statements on the tongue what you say and it is comprised of the deeds that you do so for example when you take the shahada this is uh your bear bearing witness that there is no god worthy of worship and that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his last prophet and messenger this is an illustration of iman on your tongue likewise when a person removes something harmful from the road as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the sahih hadith that this is an illustration of iman so for example if you find something harmful of harmful rock that someone could trip over or removing trash or something that comes causes harm for the people and you remove it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is an illustration of your iman likewise your salat your prayer is also uh, in part it is physical actions and this is an illustrate of illustration of your iman 
and it, it, in fact your salat contains both actions and it contains both statements of the tongue and of course iman in your heart as well it, it has all three components of iman iman by the limbs iman by the state your dhikr and your adhkar that you say and uh, your tekbirat and, and, and so forth that these are statements of the tongue reciting fatiha and likewise your ikhlas your sincerity in your heart that you're praying only to Allah that this is also all those three components of Iman are contained there in the Salat. So going back to the statement of Imam Sufyan Thawri, so he said Iman Qawlu Al-Amal. So he said Iman is comprised of statements and actions. And they say, meaning the Murjia, that it is statements without actions. That it's sufficient to say I'm a believer and not do any actions. They don't pray and so forth. And why this is relevant for us now is because unfortunately many of our brothers and sisters are in, uh, afflicted by this aqidah, this itiqad fasida, this creed, uh, this uh, innovative creed, this wicked belief in that they believe, for example, you see a sister, she doesn't wear hijab. Instead of accepting that she's in the wrong, she says, brother, you don't know what's in my heart. I don't need to wear hijab. She may even deny hijab out of total ignorance or say, hey, this scarf on my head is sufficient, even though I'm wearing jeans and a tight t-shirt, but this scarf on my head is sufficient. And this is from her ignorance more than likely. So she's saying, you don't know what's in my heart. You're correct. And this would be an illustrate, this would be correct that we don't know what's in her heart, but we know that her Iman is weak. Because what is illustrated outwardly is a reflection of what is inward. So if you outwardly disobey Allah, that's a clear sign that your Iman is weak or you're being forced to do so. And that's a whole nother aspect that we don't want to get into right now. So that lets us know that statement is batil and that statement this is the statement of people who have uh, been infected with the creed of irja, that they've been infected by believing that your deeds are not necessary with regards to your faith and your iman. You don't know what's in my heart. He's smoking weed. Brother, you don't know what I'm, what's in my heart. He's drinking alcohol. Brother, you don't know what's in my heart. He's with his girlfriend. She's with her boyfriend. Brother, you don't know what's in our heart. Then the Imam said, and we say that it increases and decreases, meaning our Imam fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And he says, and they say that it, uh, incre it doesn't increase, nor does it, uh, 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 it doesn't increase, nor does it, d does it decrease. So the murjia, they believe Iman is always stable. That either you enter into Islam and you have full Iman no matter what you drink, no matter what you do, no matter, uh, no matter what actions you do, because they don't believe uh, actions are a part of Iman. So for them, Iman is stable. You're a Muslim, a Muslim is a mu'min, he's a full believer, regardless of what he does. And likewise, uh, so this is incorrect. This goes against the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. Because as Imam Sufyan Thawri said, وَنَحْنُ نَقُولُ يُزِيرُ وَيَنْقُصُ And we say that Iman increases and it decreases. And it increases with what? It increases by doing righteous deeds. When you do righteous deeds, when you make salat, when you pay the zakat, when you do charity, when you're kind to people, when you smile at someone, when you give someone salams, when you help an old woman across the street or an old man across the street, whatever the situation is, an act that is good is increasing your Iman. So do your best, brothers and sisters, to increase your Iman. And likewise, doing sinfulness decreases your Iman. It doesn't mean you have no Iman. So for example, the one who commits zina, which is a, a great and serious crime in Islam, that doesn't mean they have no Iman. 
That means their iman is weak. Their iman is ghayra kamil. Their iman uh, is nuts. That means their iman is deficient. They have weak iman. At that time of committing the zina, their iman, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, is, is, is uh, you know, it's outside of their body. But that does not mean they are a disbeliever. So it's very important to know that sinfulness decreases your iman. And then he say, and nahnu nukul, wa nahnu nukul, nahnu mu'minun bil iqra' wa hum yukulun nahnu mu'minun in the law. And then he said, and we say that we are believers by, uh, you know, by our belief, and you know, uh, they they are assured that they are, uh, you know, believers, and that they are, uh, you know, this is according to their aqidah and ittaqad, and it's not by force. And the murjia they say, and we are believers with Allah. We are believers with Allah. So it's very important to understand. And as Imam uh, Baba Hari said, and our Sheikh said, as a uh, commenting on this, he said, Well, Mesala, Mesala, Ikhraj al Amal min Musamma al Iman, he a umda, Qol al Murjia, Aladi, Ejtama at Alehi, Tawai fi him, Kama taqaddam taqriya dalik. So he said that this is a, uh, this issue about. A person's iman, whether it is present, uh, 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 taking out iman from uh, deeds from iman, that all the murjia sects they held this belief. This is where they agree that they all believe that actions are not a part of iman, meaning your salat, doing some physical action, something with your limbs, whether it be smiling, whether it be charity, whether it be. Uh, helping someone, whether it be prayer, whether it be whatever, that these actions are not a part of Iman according to the Murjia. And this is where they all, all the sects of, Murj, uh, of the Murjia, they agree uh, to this point. And he says, وَلِذَا قَالَ بَابَ هَارِ رَحِمُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Imam Baba Hari, Rahmatullah He said in his book, Shar Sunnah, he said, "Men qala iman qawlan wa amalan yazid wa yanqus faqad kharaja an al-irja awlahu wa akhrahu." Imam Baba Hari rahmatullahi alayhi said that whoever says that iman, you know, faith, that it is comprised of statements of the tongue and actions and that it increases and it decreases, meaning we're not always on the same. Sometimes we're strong in our iman, sometimes we're weak. Sometimes you're, you're not feeling as, as strong, you're not practicing the sunnah properly, or you fall into sin, or you backbite easily, or whatever the situation is. So meaning that, yuzid wa yankos, that your iman increases, what decreases. Then if a person says this, or they believe this, then they have, uh, they do not hold the creed of the, uh, of irja or the murjia in its entirety. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.